Patrick Hutzel from intensivecareathome.com, where we provide tailor-made solutions for long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomies, and where we also provide tailor-made solutions for hospitals and intensive care units, whilst providing quality care for long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomies and medically complex patients at home, including home BiPAP, home CPAP, home TPN, home IV potassium infusion and electrolyte infusions, IV antibiotics, uh, we also provide services to clients at home that are not ventilated but have a tracheostomy and who need 24-hour intensive care nurses at home. We're also providing an emergency department bypass service for the Western Sydney local area health district. So if you need CCRNs to provide an emergency department bypass service for your hospital, please reach out to us. So. In today's video, I want to answer a question from one of our members. We also actually have a membership for families in intensive care, and you can get access to the membership for families in intensive care at intensivecarehotline.com by clicking on the membership link or by um, going to intensivecaresupport.org directly. So today I have a question from one of our members who had their dad in ICU for prolonged periods and then went home more or less out of sheer desperation because they did no longer want to stay in hospital um, because they just thought it was terrible and they were, for lack of a better term, desperate to go home, which is what they decided to do. But they decided to go home without 24-hour intensive care nurses, even though their dad had a tracheostomy. So... And he bounced back into hospital, which is no surprise. Let me read out the email from our member and um, who says, Hi, Patrick and team. Um, earlier this year, as you know, my dad suffered a heart attack. He got discharged from the hospital in the beginning of September with a tracheostomy and wasn't quite ready for rehabilitation therapy. So they recommended um, for him to stay um, in hospital. My mom and I visited obviously daily, but it wasn't a good experience. So he went home with minimal support and minimal nursing, just a nurse once a week who wasn't tracheostomy uh, competent, but he was discharged too soon without little support. Needless to say that my dad bounced back and forth into the hospital, just like you predicted, and back home two times before he came back home mid-October until last week, the end of November, to go back into hospital again. He's had all sorts of setbacks and is now in the hospital with a pressure wound area around stage four to five that originated in the hospital bed. He was in at, at it in the emergency department the second time he went back into the hospital. The MRI showed that the pressure sore is to his bone. Um, he's in ICU at this time, but um, I have set up his patient portals. I would like you to look at the medical records. Um, I'm reaching out to see if intensive care at home services can still help. And um, they're talking about possible surgery to clean his wounds out and all the risks that are involved due to his fragile condition. What do you think is the best option here? Okay, so this is a really good email. Like we've been saying here for uh, over a decade, you can't go home with a tracheostomy without 24 hour intensive care nurses. It's just not going to happen. And here is why. So over the years, we have looked after clients at home with the tracheostomy and ventilation, where the funding body, whether it's private health insurance, whether it's the NDIS, whether it's other funding bodies, were only funding overnight intensive care nurses and no intensive care nurses during the day, even though the clients had a tracheostomy or were ventilated, like in this situation here, you know, the client goes back to ICU when they have a tracheostomy. Now, needless to say that the clients that I have been referring to that were not funded for 24-hour intensive care nurses at home and only for a night shift, were then during the daytime either family members or, you know, support workers or personal care assistants were meant to look after clients with a the tracheostomy, they passed away because simply the tracheostomy is an unstable airway that can only be managed by intensive care nurses, emergency department nurses, maybe anesthetic nurses, but really that's the only skill level that can safely look after a tracheostomy. So needless to say, 
those patients pass away during the daytime, just as we had predicted at the time, you know. So that is what's really happening in the community. So therefore, I am not surprised that you are, um, you know, that your dad has bounced back into ICU. I think it's out of sheer luck that he hasn't passed away because um, like we recommended earlier in the year, he should not have gone home without 24-hour intensive care nurses, right? So, well, is it still an option for him to go home with 24-hour intensive care nurses? Absolutely. You know, should he have, should he, should they wash out his stage four, stage five pressure source? Well, if they are infected, probably yes, right? And that's also where good nursing care is coming in. You know, if you didn't have the 24-hour nurses at home, of course, no one would do proper pressure area care, you know, and of course, he'll end up with stage four, stage five pressure sores that could lead to sepsis, uh, which could be lethal, really, you know, so the risk is huge by not following best practice guidelines, but best practice guidelines and evidence-based guidelines. So if you look at our evidence-based mechanical home ventilation guidelines on our website at intensivecarehome.com, you will find that research and evidence has shown that the only way to safely look after patients at home with the tracheostomy and or ventilation are with intensive care nurses with a minimum of two years intensive care nursing experience. Um, and that's the only way it's safe, you know, and that's the research is a result of over 25 years of intensive care at home nursing in Germany in particular, and also over 10 years intensive care at home nursing in Australia, right? So it's proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that anything less than that is lethal, right? And that's why those guidelines are here. That's why the evidence is here, okay? So it's not too late to get your dad back home with 24-hour intensive care nurses. You know, if you want that, reach out to us. And how is it going to be funded? Well, currently with intensive care at home, we are operating all around Australia. We're operating in all major capital cities, including rural and regional areas. We are an NDIS approved service provider. We are a TAC in Victoria approved service provider. We are an NIISQ approved service provider in New South Wales. We are an, uh, sorry, an ICA approved service provider in New South Wales, an NIISQ approved service provider in Queensland. We're also a DBA approved service provider all around Australia. We have also worked with private health insurance. Uh, we have also received funding through public hospitals directly or through departments of health. Please keep in mind that we cut the cost of an intensive care bed by approximately 50%. Uh, that is of interest for a hospital, that is of interest for a funding body because we're improving the quality of life for our clients and their families. They want to be at home and we're also cutting the cost of an intensive care bed by 50%. So there's economics of scale in our offer in our proposal. Now, we also provide level three, level two and level three NDI specialist support coordination. Please reach out to us. Um, you know, if you need NDIS specialist support coordination to get an NDIS plan to get funding for nursing care. Um, we are also, um, you know, reaching out to families in intensive care, have a loved one in intensive care or stuck in hospital on long-term ventilation, tracheostomy, uh, please reach out to us if you're at home already and you have insufficient support because you have an unstable team or uh, you know your loved one goes back to hospital all the time or if you're watching this yourself and you are stuck at home you're bouncing back into hospital all the time please reach out to us we can put a stop to that uh, we keep clients at home predictably as a matter of fact i do argue that we are the only service or we are the service in australia that looks after the highest security clients in the community because we have the third party accreditation for intensive care at home. We have built the intellectual property to provide intensive care at home. No other service can do what we can do with all the accreditation that we have and the intellectual property we built in our team. We employ, as a matter of fact, hundreds of years of intensive care and ED nursing experience combined in our service. No other service sends that high level of skill into the community. Uh, in Australia in 2023. No other service has achieved the level of accreditation that we have achieved as an organization. So if you're at home already, you have insufficient support or insufficient funding, please reach out to us. We can help you with, I, with all of it because we have been involved in the advocacy for our clients from day one. 
Now, if you're a critical care nurse and you are uh, looking for a career change, we currently have jobs in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Albury, Wodonga, Warrigal uh, in South Gibson in Victoria, as well as Bendigo in Victoria. Uh, we are looking for committed and confident staff that can give us regular availabilities four weeks in advance that can give our clients uh, regular shifts. Please don't apply if you can't give us regular availabilities. Um, that's not going to work for our clients. So only apply to us if you are wanting to work with us regularly and with our clients regularly, because we want to build those relationships, those strong relationships with our clients and with our staff to make it a win-win situation. Now, if you're an NDI support coordinator and you need nursing care, for your NDIS participants, please reach out to us as well. If you're an NDI support coordinator and you don't know how to go about nursing care funding through the NDIS for your participants, please reach out to us as well. We're also providing NDIS nursing assessments. If, um, if you are an intensive care specialist, intensive care consultant, and you're looking for a career change, please contact us as well. We are currently expanding our medical team as well. And if you're a hospital executive watching this, we want to hear from you as well. We know you've got bed blocks in your ICU, in your hospitals with tracheostomies, home TPN, people that are blocking beds that are much better off at home. And most of them would be NDIS funded. So it's not out of pocket for you. Or, you know, if you're a private hospital executive watching this, you know, we can also talk to the private health insurances. So I hope that helps. Um, if you like my videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families with intensive care at home and intensive care. Click the like button, click the notification bell, share the video with your friends and families and comment below what you want to see next or what questions and insights you have. Thanks for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and intensivecareathome.com and I will talk to you in a few days. Take care for now.